guys, we are back in free code camp. We just finished our first section of HTML and CSS, and now we're going to use responsive design and show how to do better um, styling. So uh, here we are, responsive design with Bootstrap. We're going to be doing 10 examples. So in here, um, we are going to give our div element. So let's see. So we want to add boots. We want to add the bootstrap uh, um, CSS link to it. So you want to do that in the header or so it looks like we don't have the header here, but this is where the header would be typically. So oops, sorry guys. So we've now imported bootstrap from this link. What else? Uh, get started. And that's all HTML in a div element. So here we, this is all. We want to give a div with a class equal to container dash fluid. And then don't forget with our div, we have to close it as well. So slash div. All right, so there is that. So we created our div and we imported the um, bootstrap file. And I apologize if my voice sounds a little weird or if I cough. I am actually sick right now. Um, so I'm, I'm just really doped up on cough medicine right now. So I'm good enough to do this for the next hour. So anyhow, just uh, I apologize for that ahead of time. Um, for just bootstrap, all we need to do is add this image responsive class. So what do we want to do? You should have a total of two images. Set as SRC. So we want to add a new one. We want to add a new image, similar to what we have here. So um, where is our image? Right here. So we're going to add another one here. And we're going to say image class equals img dash responsive. And then we're going to give it src. The source is equal to this. And we go slash ums. Actually, I don't think we need that slash. So you can see right here that this is now our new image. Cool. So H2 element should be centered by applying the class text center. So um, we want to center, it looks like, our cat's photo app. So it's got some nice styling, but it's not centered, so it can look better. So what are we going to do here? We're just going to go and we're going to uh, do this class as well. I believe it's comma text dash center. Is there? I don't think there's a comma. Just a space. There we go. So text, you can see right there, it applies red text class and it applies text dash center. Not bad at all. So we're going to create a like button, it looks like. Where do we want to put this? Uh, let's do it. Let's do it above the form. So we'll create a button. We'll give it the class equal to BTN. And then we'll give it the text like. We'll close our button. So there's our like button. Pretty cool. So now we're going to talk about block level elements and inline elements. So inline, I'm always so bad with the inline and and uh, block elements. So practice makes perfect. Let's both get better at this. Your button should have the class button dot button dash block. So let's change that. Oh. So what they want?
There we go. So I just was misinterpreting what they wanted. So we added the button block class as well. I kept on trying to put it as it was in the style sheet, but that was my mistake. The button primary. So button primary is, I've, I've worked with Bootstrap a little, so I'm not going into this. Thing, but button primary is a blue button. They kind of have uh, buttons for canceling and succeeding. And so let's see, button. Uh, your button should still have the button and button dash black. So we're going to add button dash primary. Bam. There it is. So button dash block takes up the full width right here. And then button dash primary turns it blue. Cool, cool. C call out optional actions with button info. So where do we want to put this? Uh, let's put it below our like button. So uh, we want to create a button. What do we know about this button? So this button is going to be called info. We're going to have have the words info. So when we do that, see, there's our button text. What else do we want? So we want to give it the button class. And watch now, we're going to say button class is equal to a button. So you see it changes a little bit. So automatically it just got some border radius and um, changes. But then we're going to change it to button dash block, which is going to make it take up a full thing. And I think that's all it wanted us to do. Oh, all right, so now there's another class called btn dash info. And let's see what happens. So now it changes the color to be an info color info related color I suppose is probably the best way of putting it cool so we also want to create a new button called delete and we'll just keep putting these with the info rather delete so and then we close our button cool so now we'll take that one away uh, should have the class button and button dash block. So we're going to give it some styling. Class is equal to btn and btn dash block. So now it's going to be a little more curved and it's going to be across the whole thing. And now we're going to say danger. Button dash danger. Let's say, oops. Sorry guys, I, I hit control save all the time, but you can see right here the danger one is red, primary, and then info. Alright, your buttons should all be nested within the same div element called... Alright, so now we're going to be messing around with responsive design. Bootstrap works on a 12 grid system. Um, this is a great image to look at real quick. So, for instance, 12, 4, and 8 is 12, and then we could have, you know, uh, 12 of these across. We could have 6 and 6, and what happens is, based on the column, we're going to have rows, and based on how many pixels, and how it's going to restack your site. That's basically what's going on here. Um, but just be aware that we're working with the number 12. That's basically all you have to know, and it, it gets a lot simpler. So, what we want to do right here is nest in a div... Uh, with the class, we have to tell it's a row so that Bootstrap will use the proper CSS for it. And we're going to close our div right here. And so this is a row. And what else do we want to do? Buttons should all be nested. Let's see if they want us to do this actually like this. I don't think they do. But that would be very interesting if they did. Oops, sorry guys. Oh, I wonder if I was supposed to put all the buttons there. Let's try this. There we go. Yeah, I wanted the submit button as well. So, um, what we did... Oh, you know what? We messed up this whole thing. So let's. Uh, what we want to do is actually follow what I think they want us to do here. So we're going to put all our buttons together. 
So let's control X. It's going to change our image a little bit. And then outside the form, we'll do it like this. So let's see what happens when we run tests. All right, cool. So now all our buttons are at the bottom, minus our submit is part of the form. It's not technically a button. It's a button, but in our case, we're just going to ignore it like it's not. All right, so what is the issue that it's giving us here? Do we need one more div? Oh no, did I mess everything up? All right. Control Z is our friend right now. So we'll actually just pull this div class row and we'll throw it right below this div and that'll cover everything. So not the best thing to do, but hey, it's gonna work. So within, we should be nested. Each of your bootstrap buttons sh should be nested with its own column dash extra small. So the first thing is the column. We're not messing with columns. Then next comes the size, and next comes the amount of rows that each one's gonna take up. So we have three buttons here. So each one is going to need a div with the class equal to what? What is what is our class? It's a column. It's extra small, and it takes up four spots. So and then we need to end it. And so, in theory, what's going on here is we're now giving a third instead of a specific amount or percentage. It's going to it's going to change percentages. It's going to stay the same percentage regardless of the amount of pixels. So that's what's going on here in the style sheet. So there's that. So this is going to take up a third. And then our final one is going to take up a third of space as well once we change that. And we need to give it a div slash class div div class equals call dash xs as four slash div. And now our three divs right here are all taking up the same amount of space and spaced evenly. So that's what's going on there. Make sure each div has a closing tag. Uh, div. Oops. So apparently we made a mistake somewhere. So show me where this div is. There we go. Sorry, so um, we forgot to close our div. So there we go. Took a little longer, but hey, we're all learning. And I believe this is our 10th one. So after this, we'll take a, a quick break and start a new video. So HTML element should no longer have the class red. All right, so let's get rid of this. So we don't want the red text. And if, you know, check our work real quick. Cool. Should now have the class text-primary. So we want to give this a text dash primary color so it's blue very nice paragraph elements should no longer use the font monospace all right we want to get rid of this so we're like hey we want we want it to look different cool uh, smaller image remove this class smaller image we're removing smaller image so now it does bigger image oops remove it from the top image rather so image SRC, the count photos. Cool. There is that. And then add the image responsive to the class of top image. So instead here for our image, we want to add the class IMG dash responsive. God, I was struggling to find that line of code. I should just normally I put all my all my HTML on one lines. Almost always. There we go. And that was our ten. It took us about fourteen minutes plus. We got a little hung up there. Um, in the next video we'll continue doing this. And as always, guys, questions, comments, concerns, anything that you say, hey, you, you got this wrong, let me know. I want to get better and the comments keep me going. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. That'd be great. And leave me a comment letting me know what you liked about the video and what you didn't like about the video. See you next time.